we are going to talk about Hooke's law. Now, what exactly does Hooke's law say? Now, when, they, when we have an elastic object, so usually we're talking about a spring or something like that, okay, we say that the restoring force on this object is directly proportional to its extension. Okay, we're going to write this law out as F equals to minus kx. And so it is, it is the case, right? So if you compress this spring, so you push it in. So this is, let, let this be the unextended length. Okay, and if you push this spring in by a certain amount, x. Okay, so the extension is in this direction. Then there will be a restoring force in this direction, which equals to some spring constant k times x. And so the more you compress it, the stronger this force becomes because force is directly proportional to this extension, in this case, a compression, right? Similarly, if you stretch this spring, okay, like so, okay, that's your x is now in this direction, but your force, of course, will be in this direction, also equal to kx. Okay, notice that the force is always opposite to the direction of the extension, and hence the minus sign. Now, K is known as the spring constant. Okay, it is, you can think of it as a measure of how elastic something is. So if I rearrange this formula slightly, we can see that K can be expressed, or at least the magnitude of K can be expressed as F over X. And so the more elastic you are, the more you can stretch or compress with a smaller force. And so you can see, this will make k small. So in general, small k's usually indicate very elastic objects. And if k is large, that usually means that the object is kind of stiff. All right, very nice. So very, this is quite easy, okay? It's quite, nice, uh, quite a nice little law for us to use. We can also study how the F extension graph of a typical object looks like. In most situations, an object obeys Hooke's law up to some point, okay, called the limit of proportionality. So this object will obey Hooke's law up to this particular extension. Let's call this x naught. Okay. Now beyond that, okay, you'll start to bend a little bit like this. Okay, the graph starts to deviate from proportionality up to some point known as the elastic limit. Okay, and so if you stretch beyond the limit of proportionality but before the elastic limit, eh, you can still decompress and stuff like that, but you may not get back your original shape. So typically when you go to, let's say, somewhere here, if you stretch an object up to this point, when you release it, it will move back on this curve on a line that is parallel to the original part that obeys Hooke's law. And so this results in some permanent deformation over here. All right? This is all FYI. I think this is a little bit beyond what is required in the syllabus. Okay, uh, if you do happen to stretch beyond the elastic limit, and all hell breaks loose, no one knows what happens. Okay, the object could break, no one knows. Okay, but anyway, this is a typical FX graph.